One of the things that you said was that the Advent movement began just as that a yes. movement and somewhere along the way we we got off the tracks if you will what do we need to do not not as pastors not as leaders but as members of the body of christ as christians to get it on track i i'm a sociologist of religion by training i have i have my degree in religion but i also um, have other work that i've done and people groups are my passion and my focus was the study of movements. Two of my mentors worked with Gandhi, and two of my mentors worked with Dr. King. I study movements. So then I got into studying the Advent movement. A movement is when you believe in something. Mm -hmm. And we all share that belief. Mm -hmm. And we believe in it so much, we're gonna act on it. Mm -hmm. It becomes a movement. And it's amazing what becomes a movement nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, Val Bottoms became a movement. We all couldn't see our feet in the 70s. And I'm proud of those pictures. But my kids laugh at me to keep them come when they see pictures of me and my bell bottom. We can't mm -hmm. see your shoes. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but I'm, pr I'm still proud of them. Anyway, th that was a movement. Uh, a movement for justice. A movement for reconciliation. That means enough people believe in something that they're gonna do something about it. So that begs the question to our Adventist community, what do we believe anymore? Mm -hmm. Do we even hear a sermon to learn from it? No, most of, many of us listen to a sermon to assure that proper orthodoxy is being, is he using Ellen White properly? Is he using scripture? You know what? Listen for a sermon and learn from it. Mm. I, I, when another pastor preaches, I, I love it because I'm always preaching. I am always serving the food. It's nice to sit down and eat once in a while. Right. Like when Pastor Dick Dirksen preaches, I eat till I can't move mm -hmm. spiritually. I mean, I eat. And the power of a good sermon is that you learn something. And I've been in this work, in, uh, I was baptized in 1970, so what's that? I've been around for 50 years in this church, and my mustache looks like it now. <laughs> I finally look my age, and I'm no longer the guy with the big black mustache. Right. And it's this camp meeting that I came out of hiding, now I'll be the guy with the big white mustache. Yeah. <laughs> and good chocolate brown skin to highlight. Anyway, there you go. I, I know that was nice totally contrast, unnecessary. Yeah. Thank you, right? yes. What a meaningful clarification. Long story short, the idea is we began as a movement. Mm -hmm. Are you aware that uh, 13 million Americans believed in the Advent message back in 1844? Mm. Wow. It really was mm -hmm. a great mm -hmm. disappointment. Right. America was waiting for Jesus mm -hmm. to come. The nation had been reached. Mm -hmm. So we've seen a successful movement before. We were just wrong on the, on the, uh, the specifics. We learned from the mistake. And our denomination was born a little after that, mm -hmm. from that movement. So then from the Advent movement came the Seventh-day Adventist Church as a movement. We, we were the leading edge of publishing that, that didn't exist in, in mass publishing. We Educational, sanitariums, it became a movement. The people believed in something mm -hmm. and they mobilized for it. What do we believe in now? So this camp meeting is calling people to serve with what does that mean so that's my assignment for each of these meetings mm -hmm. define what I serve means mm -hmm. so tonight it was the call of Jesus mm -hmm. to be a servant if you really want to be great I commend you to be one number one but need be number one in compassion be number one in love and the fruit of that is you'll be the servant and the greatest of you the most humble of all mm -hmm. will be the servant of all yeah and um, I'll give you an anecdote that changed my life. Uh, notice that I only tell stories that I believe changed my life. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to waste your time otherwise. See, <laughs> it changed my life. Okay. Uh, um, I, I, um, I have come to the point where I realize that when a movement occurs, it's bigger than one person. Mm -hmm. Civil rights became bigger than Dr. King. The liberation of India became bigger than Gandhi. This movement to finish God's work will be bigger than us. Mm -hmm. 
Therefore, it's not up to the president. It's not up to the administration. It's up to each one of us to be filled in a latter rain that's been promised of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we began as a movement. And in Scripture and in Ellen White, we see described only a final movement. That means we come to believe something again. And the Holy Spirit fills us. And then we do it. We serve. We have, what, over 120 hospitals in North America, the largest uh, faith-based hospital system, yeah. um, over 1,000 mm -hmm. schools. We have over 300,000 volunteers to 400 Adventist community service centers. Uh, talk to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have what we call assets yeah. in people and in institutions. We are prepared to do. And if we all conclude with not only is it service, it's I serve. Not only is it a, a, a phone, it's an iPhone. It, 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 it makes it personal. It's an extension of who I am. Service becomes an extension of what these mm -hmm. hands are. Yeah. And I believe that God has called us for such a time as this. You notice I have nothing left to lose. Yeah. I preach with abandon. Yeah. Uh, I'll eventually die. And I don't say that mournfully. But I pray that enough people will have been provoked that my little contribution will have stirred two, three people to say, I'm going to do this too. And if that happens, I lived a good life. Yeah. yeah.